Implementing a hand hygiene program that's rooted in the four E's, engage, educate, execute, and evaluate, is a great way to get your healthcare facility on the path to continuous quality improvement. In this final video of our four-part series, we'll cover another essential facet of an effective program, evaluating performance. It's difficult to measure adherence to hand cleaning protocols, and there is no single best method. Credible data obtained through a variety of methods is often best to evaluate the success of initiatives or to identify the needs of healthcare personnel who are working hard to make sure their hands are clean. Let's explore a few methods of monitoring and evaluating hand cleaning that you can implement at your facility. Direct overt observation occurs when the person conducting the observation and the person being observed are known to one another. For example, when hand cleaning is included in a central line insertion checklist, the person completing the checklist watches and ensures that the person inserting the central line has cleaned their hands immediately prior to opening sterile supplies. Direct overt observation can also be used to evaluate hand cleaning techniques of personnel during demonstrations of skill. Techniques to evaluate include observing for the full coverage of hands with alcohol-based hand sanitizer, or that hands are scrubbed for a full 15 seconds during hand washing. Because individuals are fully aware that they're being observed, lapses should be immediately corrected to result in 100% adherence. Direct overt observation should be used to assist healthcare personnel in cleaning their hands the right way, especially just before high-risk tasks. Data collected by overt observation should not be reported as a rate of adherence. Direct covert observation is often referred to as the secret shopper or the anonymous method. In this case, the observer is not known to the person being observed. While there are many ways to make this approach effective, direct covert observation is prone to bias. There are, however, a variety of steps that can be taken to minimize bias. Train all personnel that collect observations on how to consistently identify adherence or non-adherence. Select locations for observations that have a clear line of sight to sinks or alcohol-based hand sanitizer dispensers. Schedule observations randomly and confidentially at times of the day when activities by diverse personnel are likely to occur, such as during patient rounds or a change of shift. Limit the time spent observing to 15 minutes or less per session. To promote a facility culture of speaking up, anonymous observers should have clear instructions about how non-adherence should be addressed. Confidential, rapid debriefing of a unit supervisor at the end of an observation session is one way to correct lapses immediately after observation. Conducting observations at room entry and exit are adequate for data collection, but should not be the focus of efforts to educate personnel about when to clean their hands. Data collected can be reported as a rate of adherence. Statistical analysis for sample size can be used to determine the number of observations needed to correctly observe a true change in hand cleaning adherence when observations are repeated over time. Automated hand hygiene monitoring systems may provide valuable data. These systems collect data at all times among all healthcare personnel. Certain systems provide just-in-time reminders for personnel if a missed indication for hand cleaning is detected. Some systems can even provide real-time data to unit-based personnel so that they can investigate and respond to non-adherence as it occurs. Personnel responsible for hand hygiene programs should collaborate with those being monitored to ensure that the data collected are useful for performance improvement. Automated hand hygiene systems can be used to report rates of adherence to hand cleaning, but they cannot evaluate technique. Ongoing daily or weekly assessments of the accessibility and functionality of hand cleaning supplies also is an important part of effective hand hygiene programs. This can include a variety of regularly occurring assessments, like measuring the amount of alcohol-based hand sanitizer dispensed. If the sanitizer evaporates in less than 15 seconds of rubbing into one's hands, then the dispenser did not provide a sufficient amount of sanitizer. Alternatively, sanitizer can be dispensed into a medication cup to measure its volume for consistency with the manufacturer's instructions. Examples of other routine evaluations may include the assessment of sinks to ensure they are not blocked by equipment, sink countertops to ensure they are free from patient supplies, splash guards to ensure they are in place, and sink drains to ensure water does not pool. 
Any deficiencies can be noted and corrected using facility-specific processes. A critical part of the evaluation process is sharing the results of your data and using your data for action. By systematically translating your data and providing meaningful feedback to the front line, you can engage personnel, improve adherence to hand cleaning, and prevent infections. For more information about hand hygiene, watch the remaining videos in this four-part series or visit our website at cdc.gov handhygiene.